By far the worst thing about 2016 was all the dreadful video games people released. It doesn't matter how many news stories or graphs with worrying downward trajectories you show me, I'm convinced it's the games. Let's just keep thinking about the games and it'll all be alright. In fact, maybe we should round up the very worst games of 2016 right now. Allegedly worst, anyway. These are the titles with the most shade thrown at them on Open Critic, and we're heading right towards them. Feel free to don your protective gloves, hold your nose like a theatrical playground bully, and hit the thumbs up if you enjoy the video. When there's something strange in your neighbourhood, who are you going to call? That's right, obviously the police. Who else? Oh right, the Ghostbusters. Well, you can call them if you like, but they'll only spend 25 minutes making mindless quips and shooting at your furniture as they try to make sense of their own wonky twin-stick control scheme. Honestly, you're better off with the boys in blue. Setting aside the bizarrely long levels, we're talking half-hour chunks of uninterrupted trudging. There's nothing explicitly obnoxious about the 2016 Ghostbusters game. In fact, it's the insipid atmosphere of the whole endeavour that proves its greatest failing. It's a game that exists because a film came out, and it barely even pretends otherwise. Oh. Slain is what happens when you play Castlevania, decide to make a game like Castlevania, and then forget you said you'd do that until the day before the game's out. Which is to say, it's a bit rough around the edges. If you squint really hard, you can just about make out something handsome in Slain's 16-bit side-scrolling, but that's little consolation when the screen fills up with projectile-flinging idiots like this. Doesn't that look fun? No, it wasn't fun to stumble around under a barrage of cheap glowing orbs in 1991, and it certainly isn't fun in 2016 when you know a game of Overwatch is just an odd tab away. There's a new and improved version of Slain out now, but for anyone who played its original release, the damage has been done. Slain. More like wrecked. Right? Um, right, right? Wouldn't it be hilarious if someone made a game where you literally just drink soda and all the levels were stoner sketches realised in Microsoft Paint and they called it Soda Drinker Pro? Truth be told, you can follow that gag pretty easily right up until the whole actually charging people for it part. Drinking soda is funny, of course it is, but is there enough levity to sustain a $9 pricing and 100 plus levels? I wish I had a skateboard with a soda on it. We'll let you decide. We certainly don't secretly think it's absolutely brilliant and that we're only duty bound to include it because Open Critic hates it. No, sir. You won't catch us laughing at this one when you're not around. Nuh-uh. I can learn so much from the tiger sitting in this room. As I drink my soda. What the world really needs now is another zombie game. And zombie-filled zombie shooter Umbrella Corps is only too happy to oblige. Unfortunately, the devs went and forgot how human beings hold a gun before releasing it, so you're left with a third-person shooter in which your on-screen representative holds a pistol to his ear like a confused uncle answering the phone. More unusual still, the operatives inside this resi-themed shooter are able to crawl on their belly at a full sprint, which, if we're honest, does affect the sense of realism after a while. It's like a rapid drainpipe, that one. Oh, and the netcode's broken. It's full of bugs and no one plays it, so you can't get a game online. Next. 3D realms are a safe pair of hands. You're assured a certain level of quality when a game comes from the same studio who made Duke Nukem, Prey, and, um... Raptor Call of the Shadows? <clears throat> so, it's no exaggeration to say that Bombshell's underwhelming final quality was the biggest upset of 2016. How could a top-down sci-fi shooter about shooting things be anything other than exquisite? Alas, such is the bland reality of Bombshell. Enemies look like the first thing you picture when I say, sci-fi enemies. Levels look like the first thing you picture when I say, levels in a bad video game. And the script? Well, the script's just not very good. And the award for ironic game title of the year goes to... Don't pretend you can't hear me, Zenith. You know it's you. Come up here and accept your award. Critics are calling it a mangled carcass and sloppy. But 
who listens to critics. If for some reason you played it, Zenith likely represented the nadir of your gaming habit this year. The tongue-in-cheek fantasy fair sets up plenty of opportunity for genre-aware RPG lampooning, but a widely furiously reported spate of bugs and glitches put pay to anyone's sense of humour when it released. Playing it feels like going back and revisiting something you played one school holiday and half remember enjoying, but realise it was bobbins all along. Except this one released, you know, this year. Do you ever play a game you're not enjoying and wonder to yourself, would people have thought it was the best game ever if it had come out years ago? I have, and in the case of punishingly obtuse platformer Militant, that initial release date would have come sometime in the late 1800s. We're still not even 100% sure it even has a control scheme. We just pressed the buttons and sometimes we didn't die. It told us how to lock on enemies quite a lot, but... Yeah. And look, we're all for exploring the possibilities of an ant-led military assault on a compound made of grey sticks, but would it have killed Militant to include a bit of variety for your poor, starved eyes? And perhaps a colour palette that widened beyond government facility concrete and pensioner's jacket. No? Fine. It's hard to look death by game show in the eye and tell it you don't like it. The screen's always bristling with nice things to look at, and it's trying to do a lot of new and ambitious stuff with its design. That buys a lot of goodwill. But that goodwill burns away astonishingly quickly after you spend a few minutes doing this. A tower defence strategy game with an iron will to make you cry. Death by Game Show demands incredible skill from you and features more cheap grinding than a talky nightclub. What's especially frustrating is that you can tell as you play that so much talent went into its creation in all the wrong places. Its developers are always working to improve it, but you can't help but wonder if they'd be better off starting afresh at this point. No, look, I refuse to accept that a game called Dinocide isn't Game of the Year. Dinocide? How could it... Ah, right. I see it. It's... Mm, it's not... Yeah. Okay, so game names don't always get the games they deserve. Sometimes they're squandered on rudimentary quasi-8-bit platformers featuring protagonists who die of hunger at a frankly absurd rate. This chap can't walk a hundred yards without literally collapsing and dying of starvation, which is every bit as much fun as it sounds when implemented in a side-scrolling video game. If you find a dino egg, you can control one of a few breeds of dinosaur to clear different environmental obstacles, until they inexplicably expire from hunger too, which is actually a half-decent idea, except for the dying of hunger bit. Are we done here then? I've got five more 2016 features to view this morning. Oh, we are. That'll do it for the worst games of 2016, according to Open Critic. We've laughed, we've cried, we've played games we didn't enjoy that much. Acknowledge our sacrifice by giving us a thumbs up, leaving a comment and subscribing to our channel. We promise to never ask, what is up you guys? 